Hi, I'm Kevin Kaminsky, and welcome to another video of working with Microsoft Application Virtualization 5.1 on Windows 10 Enterprise 1607. In this video, what I'm going to show you is how to work with the AppV client and see how a non-virtual application exists with a virtual application. In Windows 10 Enterprise Anniversary Edition, the AppV client is part of the operating system. This means there's no need to install the client. However, the client is not enabled by default. You can enable the client through group policy or through PowerShell. In this example, I'm going to enable the client through PowerShell. So I'm going to go down to my Start menu, open PowerShell as an administrator, click Yes for UAC, and then I'll type in Enable App V. So I'm going to enter in the command, and I'll get a success message. Now I'm going to reboot my box because even though the success message doesn't indicate it, I do need to reboot my machine in order to fully activate the client. Now that I've rebooted my machine, I'll log in. And the AppV client should be enabled at this point. What I'm going to do is go down and install an older version of WinRAR, version 3.91. This is not an AppV package. And I'm just running through a default installation of the application. And now that it's done, I'm going to launch the application, go help about, and as you can see, this is the old version of WinRAR. Now, I'm going to go to the AppV package that I copied to the client machine, and there's the AppV package files. Now, I could install it using PowerShell, but to make it easy, I'm going to use the MSI because the MSI essentially runs a custom action that has the PowerShell to install the package. It does require elevation, so I'm going to click yes. And now my package is installed. Now if I go up to my start menu, there's two icons with the exact same name. And this can happen if you're sequencing two packages that are the same application, or one's virtual and one's not. And this is something you have to be aware of when you're sequencing your application, is to uh, make it easier for the end user to understand the difference between the different shortcuts by naming them differently. Uh, we used to sometimes put them in separate folders, but that's not as easy to differentiate with Windows 10, so using unique names is probably more preferable. So this shortcut here on the bottom should be the version 5.40 AppV package. I'm going to click it, and it launches WinRAR. And if I do uh, help about... It's the version 5.40 of the package. So, what I'm going to do now is look at the file system. So if I go to C, Program Data, App V, there's a package GUID. That's the App V package, and every App V package should have a unique GUID. This is assigned by the sequencer. And if I go a layer lower, there's a version good, which is also assigned by the sequencer. If I go in there, there you'll see the actual package. And here you can see that there's uh, a registry.dat file, which is in fact the entire registry uh, for the package that gets overlaid on the physical registry of the client. If I go into the root folder, there's a VFS folder, which is the virtual file system, and these files and folders get overlaid on the physical file system. 
So if I go into here, Program Files x64, WinRAR, you will see that WinRAR.exe lives in here. And if I launch it, it is the AppV package. Now, if I go back and go to the physical location of C Program Files WinRAR and launch WinRAR, this is the version we manually installed. And this is behavior by design. Because the AppV package is virtual, it's not seen at the physical layer in the same way that a physically installed application would be. And this is, uh, gives us the ability to have both the physical and virtual package living side by side. Now, if I go into the registry, it's a very similar story. So. Uh, if I open regedit and I go to hkey classes root app v client packages, you should notice down here that there is in fact a package good, the same package good. So what I'm going to do is expand that out, go into the versions key, and there's the version good. If I expand that out and go into registry user, I can expand this out and here is the current user registry items that are inside the package. This again is overlaid onto the physical client, but it isn't seen at the physical level. So this is the trick that AppV does is, is it redirects calls from the virtual application to these redirected locations on the physical client, and this allows the virtual application to run. And this also allows the application to be separate from the physical install of the application, allowing you to prevent application conflicts because this application, WinRAR, isn't designed to have multiple versions running side by side, yet using AppV, I can very easily achieve that. So I hope you can see some of the value in using AppV and how the virtual application is installed on the client machine and operates on the client machine. In future videos, I hope to show you some tricks you can do with AppV to solve some of your day-to-day -day application issues. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. Look for more episodes on this YouTube channel later, and in the meantime, check out my Twitter feed, at kkaminsk. Also, I have a blog, kkaminsk.blogspot.ca. I'm also on LinkedIn, under Kevin Kaminsky, or linkedin.com in K. Kaminsk and kkaminsk.wordpress.com.